Hi again coach, hope you're well. In the previous videos we discussed the idea of nested planning. This approach encourages a coach to think about participant development over long, medium and short periods of time. It also encourages coaches to set clear goals, objectives or learning outcomes that help them to have clear expectations of participant progress. Importantly, when coaches have clear expectations, they are better prepared to know what they're looking for when coaching. The idea of nested planning works from a top-down perspective. This means it starts with the final product in mind. So in other words, after one year, my participants will be able to demonstrate this, this and this. But these final expectations can only be achieved if there are associated medium and short-term goals that when met from session to session, contributes to the overall final objective. As such, the medium and long-term goals allow for a coach to shape what is needed within each session. To help coaches plan appropriately, Dr. Bob Muir of Leeds Beckett University developed the Coach Planning and Reflective Framework, better known as the Diamond Diagram. The Diamond Diagram is a tool that coaches can use to plan sessions effectively. It is separated into four areas. One, session objectives. Two, practice structure. Three, coach behaviors. And four, player engagement. So let's start with the session objectives. We must stress that the planning of a session should always start with the objectives, as it provides an informed expectation of what a coach believes their players should have acquired by the end of the session. As mentioned in previous videos, objectives should be SMART, that is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and be attainable within the time that they have to coach the session. By starting the planning process with the session objectives, coaches can then plan activities and behaviours to allow every player to meet the intended outcome. We now move on to the second part of the diamond diagram, which is practice structure. As coaches, we have to design our activities with only one intention in mind, to meet the session objectives that have been set. So, for example, if one of the session objectives is technical, such as the technique of a pass in soccer or netball, I have to plan for an activity that allows the players to repeat the technique or skill with success. On the other hand, if the objective demands the improvement of a technique within a tactical environment, I have to plan an activity that allows for frequent attempts of the skill under competitive conditions. Importantly, we propose that coaches steer clear of adopting the terms drills or games and instead encourage coaches to select activities that match the session objective set. Now, coaches should move to the third part of the framework and plan for their intended behaviour. Coach behaviours include instruction, questioning, feedback, demonstration, and observation amongst a number of others. The behaviours coaches plan for should be the most appropriate to assist the participants to achieve the session objectives. Chapter two gets into this in more detail. The final part of the diamond diagram is player engagement. We propose that coaches should always plan, keeping in mind how their players will interact with the proposed session activities and coach behaviours. Thinking in this way may lead to a coach to go back to their plan and make changes to better meet the capabilities and objectives of the players. To summarise, in Chapter 1 of MOOC 1, we explained Andy Abraham's coach decision-making model, which stressed the importance of asking the following questions. 1. Who are you coaching? 2. What are you coaching? And 3. How are you coaching? The diamond diagram allows you to plan with these questions in mind. The what is answered through the session objectives. The how through the proposed practice structure and coach behaviours. And the who through the consideration of player engagement. To wrap up this video, let me share with you some of the additional nitty gritty questions that you may wish to consider when planning your sessions. For instance, one. How many participants are you expecting? Two, are there different levels of ability in the group? Three, what equipment do you need or have? Four, 
What support from helpers or assistants will you require? Five, how are you going to manage transitions between activities? Six, when are you going to have water breaks? Seven, if you coach outdoors, what's the weather going to be like? Or eight, are there any messages you need to give the kids and their parents after the session? Don't worry, you don't have to remember all these questions. You can download our session planner template from the course platform, which includes them all. Okay, so whilst these ideas are fresh in your mind, please complete the end of chapter quiz to see how well you've retained the main concepts. After doing the quiz, please go to the next chapter where we'll explore how learning happens and how coaches can help facilitate it through the use of sound practice structure and coaching behaviours. Until then, keep calm and coach on.